Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I have another video for you. I was reading the comments in the video and Todd Carpenter asked how I had my MIDI keyboard set up exactly to be able to send the USB MIDI and the MIDI port out at the same time. I quickly explained it in the last video, but I figured I'd make kind of like a tutorial explaining exactly how I did it, why I had to do it that way, what other options you might have depending on your setup. So with that, let's get started. So over here, I've already made an audio track. Um, I called it Kronos Rudis Lead because uh, the keyboard that we're going to be sending the MIDI signal to is going to be my Kronos, and the sound on it currently is the Jordan Rudis Lead sound. So right now, the main MIDI controller that I have in front of me is a Native Instruments Complete S61 Mark II. It's currently my favorite MIDI controller on the market. It has a great keybed, semi-weighted synth action. Um, I prefer the wheels for the mod and pitch over the joystick, personally. So that's a nice touch. And it has pretty decent integration with your DAW, and especially if you use Native Instruments software, uh, it has amazing integration with that. So the problem with this keyboard and other MIDI controller keyboards is if you try to use the USB port and the MIDI ports at the same time, it doesn't work. Uh, it only, only one or the other works by default. I'm not sure why that is, but most people are probably gonna be using this keyboard with the USB cable because the USB cable also powers it, unless you get a separate power adapter, but nobody wants to do that. So I had to find a solution because I tend to use my MIDI controller with virtual instruments, and at the same time, I like to be able to control my Kronos and any other keyboards. So as you might expect, I did some research on Google, found some solutions, but there wasn't really a solution if you are specifically on a Mac with Catalina installed, the newest operating system, which while I'm not on Catalina on my desktop here, it's Mojave, on my laptop, my MacBook Pro, I am on Catalina, and I had to find a solution and after searching Google for a while, I couldn't find any fixes that work on Catalina. So I had to start getting creative. Then I started thinking of how I could apply the solution that these other people were coming up with on my own. And in fact, the solution actually ended up being pretty simple and easy. You don't need any of the software that people and companies recommend that you download to fix it. If you have a DAW, that is all you need. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it in the DAW the way that I did it, and then I'll show you if you want any of the applications or software out there that does the fix for you, how to do that. Okay, so first of all, right now, my MIDI controller is connected to USB, and I have a MIDI cable going out into my Kronos. Right now, nothing, right? No sound. Play on my Kronos. <laughs> sound, right? So in a DAW, it's really simple. All you have to do is just create a MIDI track. We'll call it to Kronos. And still nothing, right? But if you go to the output, select port two, now we have sound. If, so if you want to do like what I did in my last video, which was to record the MIDI from this keyboard and send it at the same time to another keyboard, that's the way to do it. You would just have your instrument track or MIDI track to record this, and you'd have another MIDI track to send it through the other port to your other keyboard. So if so, for whatever reason you can't do this on a DAW or you don't have access to a DAW and you still need this fix, if you're on a Mac with an operating system pre-Catalina, there's an app called MIDI Patch Bay that can do the fix for you. So just Google MIDI Patch Bay and uh, ignore all the hardware patch bays. It's usually the first thing, it's right here. MIDI Patch Bay, not a hat. Just go there. It works pretty much on any Mac operating system pre-Catalina.
Once you install it, all you gotta do is go to it, open it up, and here it shows you the default for this keyboard. So what do you wanna do? For MIDI input, you make it port one, and for MIDI output, you make it port two. And let's get rid of this, and it should work. Yeah. So the only thing you have to keep in mind is you can't close the app or else it doesn't work. So you have to leave it open, make sure input is port one, output's port two, and you're good to go. And if you're on Windows and you can't use a DAW, the app that you want to look for is called MIDI OX. I'll do that right now, MIDI OX, right there. Just download it and it's a little different from the Mac app, but it's essentially the same. You just have to make sure MIDI input is port one, MIDI output is port two, and you're good to go. And that's it. It's really that simple. If you have that issue, the DAW is the easiest way. If you have a MIDI controller, you're probably going to be using it with a DAW anyway. I'm not sure why this method hasn't been mentioned or talked about. I can't imagine that I'm the first person to figure this out. Um, but even if you go on like Native Instruments website, uh, if, if, if you go to their FAQ and look up this problem, the solution they have for it, if you're on Mac, is using MIDI Patch Bay. And if you're on Windows, using, using MIDI OX. Um, nowhere does it mention anything about being able to just make another track in your DAW and sending the signal out that way. Seems like a much more convenient, readily available solution without installing any other software. But now you know, and if you guys found this video useful and helpful, please let me know by hitting that subscribe button and the like button. That lets me know that you guys found this video useful and that I should continue doing stuff like this. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. So with that, I'm gonna end this video with a little improvised keyboard solo jam shred because I'm a musician after all, and uh, while making tutorials is really useful, I also want to have fun and jam out, so here we go.